When I rise, I will rise like a bird joyfully. And when I fall, I will fall like a leaf gracefully. When I rise, I will rise like a bird that soars joyfully. And when I fall, I will fall like a leaf gracefully. When I rise, I will rise like a bird joyfully, and when I fall, I will fall like a leaf gracefully. When I rise, I will rise like a bird. So joyfully, joyfully, and when I fall, when I, fall I will fall like, like a leaf, so like a leaf gracefully. When I rise, I will rise like a bird joyfully. And when I fall, I will fall like a leaf gracefully. When I rise, I will rise. Welcome to our worship service. Let us settle into our spaces, take a deep breath in and out. As Unitarian Universalists, we believe we are all connected in this world and we value the worth and dignity of each and every person. We pull on the wisdom of many sources to teach us, guide us, and help us understand this world. As we prepare our hearts for worship, let us remember our connections through our collective chalice lighting words. Please join me. In the light of truth and the warmth of love, we gather to seek and seek to share. Our opening words are from Sobonifo Somme. Community is the spirit, the guiding light of the tribe whereby people come together in order to fulfill a specific purpose, to help others fulfill their purpose, and to take care of one another. Come, let us worship together. Please rise in spirit and voice for opening hymn, We Shall Be Known. We shall be known by the company we keep by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive.
We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change of life from deep within the earth. It is time now. Turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be so and reap the seeds of change to life from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. This great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. Our first reading is by Christine Slocum. Christine is a UU whose work facilitates housing for people experiencing homelessness and severe mental illness. Her reading, Begetting Community, starts with a quote by Marianne Williamson. In every community, there is work to be done. In every nation, there are wounds to heal. In every heart, there is the power to do it. Christine continues with this reflection. Not atypical of Buffalo, there's a vacant house next door. And not atypical of vacant houses, it has a garage with a missing window. It became home to woodchucks, skunks, and cats. I recognize the first two as forces of nature, but the cats are invasive. When I move into my house, neighbors told me that a former occupant had fed the feral cats. Yeah, not me, I said. I'm a bird lover. Feral cats disseminate song. We were not pleased, but we were patient. This is the text of an urban environment. I felt more inclined to live with it than change it. Peering out the kitchen window one morning, we saw kittens bouncing through the yard. A tabby watched them. Oh, I thought, the tabby cat begets more cats. A colleague referred me to a local nonprofit which advises the community on humane ways to deal with these feral cats. They call it trap, neuter, vaccinate, release. You trap the cats, bring them for spading and neutering. The vets vaccinate them and you bring them back. Okay, I thought, if it needs to be done, 
Let's do it. So I began to trap the feral cats. This is not something I saw myself doing. I borrow the traps, use time off from work to get them to their appointments, cared for them in my garage, and released them when it was time. It was a process that took three weeks. Training them to go into the traps meant that we've started feeding them and giving them water. The kittens went through growth spurts. After releasing two males and watching one stick around, I realized that I've accidentally become the caretaker of this colony. Our decision to be the neighbors who take the lead on this problem means that we will now own it in our community. Part of being in a community is noticing what's needed. Part of being in a community is doing what is necessary, but unclaimed. Being part of a community means being willing to own what might not be easy or comfortable. I also learned that being part of a community means being willing to own one's own power, which required me to stretch beyond what I thought I'd be willing to do. May we be open to being the force of change in our communities. Our community needs, rather big or small, our second reading is adapted and written by Robert R. Walsh. When the great plates slip and the earth shivers and the flaw is seen to lie in what you trusted most, look not to more solidity to weighty slabs of concrete poured, or strength of cantilevered beam to save the fractured order. Trust more the tensile strands of love that bend and stretch to hold you in the web of life that's often torn but always healing. The shifting plates, the rest of earth, your room, your precious life, they all proceed from love, the ground on which we walk together. Sister up, she is not heavy. I'm gonna lift my sister up, she is not heavy. I'm gonna lift my sister up, she is not heavy. If I don't lift her up, I will fall down. brother up he is not heavy i'm gonna lift my brother up he is not heavy i'm gonna lift my brother up he is not heavy if i don't lift him up i will fall down people up they are not 
Last Sunday, you broke up into groups to discuss the successes and challenges as well as lessons CUP has learned in the past year. As the results from these conversations were emailed to me, it reinforced the resiliency of this church community, community and how well you have come together in times of need. As many of you who are members and friends know, communication went out this week to announce my choice to enter into chaplain residency program in the San Francisco Bay Area, which means my last day is July 31st. This is a result of several factors. First, we have done so much work together in the past nine years. It is truly amazing to reflect on where we started in ministry in 2012 together and where we are now. In 2012, you were trying to determine how to pay for ministry and struggling to create stable finances. Leadership development was just at the beginning of stages. A new building was only a dream. Now, Cuff has a solid financial foundation, strong leaders, and you are on the cusp of realizing the dream of a new building. I feel I have done the ministry that I was called to do here, and it is time for a new ministry to enter into your journey. I feel new skills and new insights are needed to carry you into the future. The second factor is parish ministry requires so many hats and so many ways of being. My soul and spirit soar when I'm preaching, meeting with you on your journeys, and teaching. However, a majority of the work is truly administrative, and I realize that work does not feed my soul. In addition, I feel a strong need to step into a place where many of my colleagues have held so beautifully this past year during the, the, during the pandemic. And I know their souls and spirits are breaking, which means they need to step back. We know from our work together, there's a constant stepping back and stepping forward in the work we do to create love, beauty, and justice in our world. The third factor is my family. Connor will be going to college this year, either in California or the East Coast. If in California, then this help establishes residency. If on the East Coast, then it is easier to reach him from a major metropolitan area. In addition, Bree wants to go to college and to a California college. And again, residency helps with those tuition costs. Don and I went to college and we're married in the Bay Area and is where our hearts feel most at home. I want to reassure you that I am not leaving due to any conflict, frustration, or anger. I truly love you all and am honored to have been your minister. Reverend Jack Mendelson once said something along the lines of how great ministers and great congregations create each other. You have truly nurtured me and helped me grow. You have grown me into a great minister. I am grateful for the lessons you have taught me, the ways you have brought me into your lives, and how we have cared for each other. In this ministry together, you, you as a congregation have lived into your mission and covenant. You have supported each other. You have grown so much. And like, unlike many of our other UU congregations, you are thriving and healthy. I'm excited for you and the possibilities you have in front of you. And I know you love me, even if you might be angry or disappointed right now. And so in our saying goodbye, in our honoring of the changing of the seasons, we will honor the love that we have shared. This means allowing ourselves to experience the full spectrum of grief. Be angry with me if you need to. Be sad. Be excited. You can feel betrayed, abandoned, hopeful confused. Feel whatever it is you need to feel. We can work through it. Call me and yell at me on the phone. I won't hang up because I know it is a natural part of the grieving process. We have to feel all the feels and that is okay. That is normal and indeed it is healthy because we will get through it. Meanwhile, you'll be starting a new adventure 
Your board is already connected with the UUA team that works with these transitions. I have recommended the congregation enter an interim ministry, which is a minister that works with the congregation to integrate their knowledge from this ministry and prepare for the next ministry. They have special skills trained for this transition, and many have skills that help with building projects. The congregation is well-loved and thought of in the UUA, and I have been talking you up to all my colleagues. So I trust you will find a good match. If you have questions about that process, then please contact your board members. It is very clear I am not able to be part of that process. I understand there might be feelings of fear and trepidation for this change, which is to be expected. And this congregation has gone through ministerial transitions before. There are people in the congregation that have been through the process either with this congregation or in another congregation they attended. The board will need to identify a team to lead the congregation through this process. Some of you have already stepped up and identified yourself. Thank you. If you feel you want to be part of that process, then let Deb or Leroy know. You have so many aspects of your congregational life that are positive traction for, for ministers. You are financially sound, you are thriving and healthy, you have strong leadership, you have a solid staff, and you have a beautiful location. Most importantly, this congregation serves an area where our UU beliefs and values are sorely needed. Is Cuff perfect? Of course not. It is made up of humans, and as I have always said, as humans, we are imperfect beings. However, you have shown your willingness to learn, to grow, to engage, and to be in relationship, which are important when ministers are looking for their next congregation to serve. I will be determining what needs to be collected or gathered to help with the transition. If you think of anything that I need to have on the list, then please let me know. One of the hardest things in life to do is to say goodbye to someone you love. I hope you know I do love you and have been honored to serve you. We will have the next five months to work through our emotions together, to share what we have learned, to extend our gratitude and love, to celebrate what we have done, and to say goodbye. I will be available during that time, the time after the service today for all who need to talk as well as available by phone or Zoom or in person. Just reach out and let me know. For now, may we hold each other gently and with love. May it be so. Our prayer today is a body prayer from Reverend Lisa Friedman. You may choose to sit or stand. We touch the floor to remember wherever we bring our best self is holy ground. We reach for the sky to remember we are a part of mystery much bigger than ourselves. We reach our hands out to remember that we need one another and are part of one human family. We join our hearts to remember that we each have a gift to offer the world and to use in making the world a better place. Amen. Please raise your spirit and voice for our closing hymn, Life Calls Us On.
Our benediction is from Reverend Dr. Rebecca Ann Parker. Even when our hearts are broken by our own failure or the failure of others, cutting into our lives, even when we have done all we can and life is still broken, there is a universal love that has never broken faith with us and never will. Love be with you. Please join in our collective chalice extinguishing words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Please raise your hands in the spirit of connection for our closing song. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Carry the flame of peace and love until we